This is Harold Covington speaking, and the date is February the 18th, 2010. This morning, at around 10 o'clock Central Standard Time, a man named Joseph Stack crashed a light aircraft into the Internal Revenue Service offices in the Federal Building in Austin, Texas. He left behind a long online manifesto, or final communication, in which he described with great passion and somewhat less coherence, the shafting that, like so many white men of his generation, he received at the hands of the America he was raised to believe in. At the present time, the authorities are only admitting to Stack himself being dead. Looks like the poor bastard didn't even manage to take a single bureaucrat in a suit with him. It's not clear at this point whether Stack had any white racial leanings or not, but his is a condition of mind and soul we can all sympathize with. To quote his own farewell address to the world, he said, I have just had enough. In this, he speaks for all white Americans, and his willingness to make his point by giving up his own life tells us that at least he meant what he said. I've spoken before in my writings of what the radicals of the 19th century referred to as the propaganda of the deed. Well, this was it. Was his act a complete waste? I hope not, but I'm not sanguine about his chances of accomplishing anything. Americans mostly exist on a beavis and butthead level. Symbolic gestures like stacks go right over their heads. But I want to take this opportunity to speak to all of you out there, both men of stacks generation and mine, and also to young white kids who have been raised under political correctness, and who understand that America no longer holds out any hope or any future for them. Time and again, Over the past 40 years, I've seen white men snap like this. They go to a shopping mall or a former workplace armed with a couple of semi-autos and they come in the door smoking or else just go off on a pointless spree blasting anything black or brown that moves until the cops catch up with him and either the guy gets shot by the police or else he sticks the muzzle in his own mouth and he blows himself away. I know that right now there are untold numbers of angry white males out there who have been driven to the point of homicidal rage by the terrible injustice, the unfairness, and the tyranny of mind, body, and spirit which is Obama's America in 2010. I know some of you in the back of your minds are contemplating doing something of this nature. You wouldn't be human if you weren't. I know some of you listening to my voice right now are thinking in your desperation and your righteous rage at the wrongs that America has done to you that going out in a blaze of glory might just be worth it. I'm telling you now, no, it isn't. There are practical reasons why it isn't worth it, not the least being that there's no way you could possibly inflict enough damage on the enemy to justify the sacrifice of a single racially aware white life. There are so few, so terribly few of us, and every one of you is precious to me and to our racial future. If you were able to kill a hundred or a thousand street niggers or Mexicans or federal bureaucrats, the scales still wouldn't balance in our favor. I'm reminded of the words of General George Patton, who said, Nobody ever won a war by dying for his country. You win by making the other poor dumb bastard die for his country. You may reply, It's my life and I can give it up when and how I want. No, it isn't. Your life belongs to your people and to the moment of history into which you have been born, and it is not yours to throw away. The late Pastor Robert Miles once said, A racist is someone who knows who he is. If you have attained the precious gift of racial consciousness, of knowing who you are, then it is your inescapable duty to use that consciousness to secure the existence of our people in the future for white children. You are not in this for yourself for your own benefit or your own private vengeance. Uh, There have been ages in the past wherein white men were free to live for themselves and their own desires. This time and place we live in is not one of them. Many of you will have read my Northwest Independence novels, and I want to remind you of what I had a number of my characters say in all four of those books in one form or another. The duty of a revolutionary is not to kill people, but to free people. Our goal is to change the world, and all of our personal lives, actions, and decisions must be subordinated to that objective. Any damn fool can die for his country and his cause. Only a true patriot and a man of honor and integrity can find within himself the strength of character, the self-discipline, and the iron will to live for it. That kind of moral strength and character is what I demand of everyone associated with the Northwest Front, and it is what all of you should demand of yourselves.